Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this gold stenciled, this is a ginkgo stenciled tall cake with some chocolate decorations. And I added a little circular, added little punch of detail made out of foam. You can make that out of cake, but I decided to make it out of foam this time, just a little easier. So if this sounds interesting, we'll get right to it. First thing we're gonna do is make our textured chocolate. And I am just using candy melts is what I'm using, but you can use whatever kind of chocolate you want. Um, but I'm just adding texture to it by taking some foil and just crinkling it up in a ball and then flattening it out, but leave some texture on there. And to make the candy melt color that I got, I used some red and some pink that I had, and then I added some color mill burgundy to that. Um, the red and the pink give us our base color and then I didn't have to add very much of the food coloring to get it to the depth that I wanted it to. If you struggle getting it to the right depth, you can actually add a little bit of brown or a touch of, of black to get the depth of color that you want for that if you're going for this color. Then I just poured it out on to my foil, tapped out some of those air bubbles and I'm just smoothing it out with an offset spatula. Now don't make it too thin because when you go to cut it, it could break. You wanna leave it about an eighth of an inch minimum to a quarter of an inch thick and just pop it in the fridge and chill while you are doing the rest. And this is how I made my little decorative element there. I just used two rounds. These are four, no, yeah, four inch rounds. Maybe they're four inch, they might be six inch. They're actually, I think they're six inch rounds. Glued them together with a hot glue gun and then I'm just gonna cover them with fondant. Now this is another one of those times where if you do do an element like this, you just need to communicate with your customer that there are, this is not edible, this part, you'll need to take it off before you eat it. This would also, doing it this way would save your customer some money too, because you're not making it edible, so you can save a little bit on that, but you still get the, the wow factor with the design element. So I'm just rolling out my fondant, popping any air bubbles, and I'm making sure that it is long enough and wide enough for what I need. This part here, I forgot to mention, this is actually for the wrap. We're doing a paneled wrap around the cake. I, I know I do this all the time. Been doing a lot of fondant lately. I'm gonna have to step up my buttercream game here pretty soon. <laughs> but anyway, I really prefer the wrap method because you can get a much cleaner end result. And since I want this to firm up a little bit before I even do the stencil, I just set it all to the side. Now I brought back my foam that hot glue has, has cooled. So I'm just using any tool that you have that is a right angle, a 90 degree. That's 90 degrees, isn't it? Yeah, 90 degree corner, just to mark out what part you wanna cut off. And I'm using a serrated knife that um, I'm going to heat up with my blowtorch. That helps to kind of just like melt the foam more than making a huge mess. You're still gonna kind of have a mess because you're, you're dealing with a serrated knife but there are tools out there for cutting foam. I just don't happen to have that. So I just heat up my knife and then cut out the piece. Like I said, there are some little ragged ends there, but you know, and they get everywhere. It's, it's kind of annoying, but just if you get a wet paper towel, that's kind of the easiest way to clean that up. And now I'm just cutting out a piece because we're gonna have to, it looks like a Pac-Man at this point. We're gonna have to fill Pac-Man's mouth <laughs> with some fondant. So I thought the easiest way to do that would just be cut a, a strip that is the same width as the piece and just place it in there. And I did, I didn't show it, but I had put the fondant on the front side of that also. I did that first and then, and cut off the excess around the circle. And then I did the middle piece. You, I guess you wouldn't have to cover that with fondant but to make it more food safe. I would just go ahead and, and to make it cleaner, go ahead and pull, put the fondant in a Pac-Man mouth, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> and then we have another piece of fondant that we're just wrapping around the, S, the rest, the other side, and then cutting off the excess after it is stuck to the fondant, or the fondant, I'm sorry, the foam. I like to just use shortening also, side note, to get my fondant to stick to foam. A little water would work too. Um, you could even use simple syrup if you want to, but I find the shortening works just fine. And if you don't have shortening where you live, um, Trex is what it's called in other countries. It's the same thing. 
Now, I did have to mess with this for a little bit just to get it as clean as I possibly could. Um, just to have patience and add some shortening or treks to your, your um, fondant to give yourself a little bit of extra play time because the shortening or treks will add elasticity to it, which means you have a little bit more time to play with it. And then that piece on the bottom there, I'm just kind of trying to stretch it and pull it to get it to meet up to the side. The easiest way to clean this would be at this point to go ahead and put it in your fridge to let it firm up and then cut that extra piece off. But I um, am taking a little trip here and I only had time to do one video. I had one day, so I didn't have the extra time, the luxury of time to let things set up this time. But typically that's what I would do. Now the stencil that I'm using, I think it's ginkgo leaves. It at least has that ginkgo impression to it. Um, it could be, you know, tropical leaves, but still it reminds me of ginkgo leaves, which are they tropical? They might be tropical leaves. <laughs> but since I wanted to have this at a specific place on the fondant and not around the whole thing, I taped off the pieces that I did not want. That's a good way to prevent yourself from overspreading your product or overspraying. Then I put some shortening on the back and I'm pressing it on the piece of fondant. Now I'm visualizing, I know it's off center, but when you wrap it around, I want the back of it, I want the, how do I put it? The stencil to be around the side. So it's not gonna be in the middle. Otherwise where your two pieces meet up, it's not gonna be in the back. So you kind of have to think about that ahead of time. And then I just put some saran wrap over the rest of the fondant to try to prevent overspray, which I did still get a little bit, but all you have to do to clean that up, so you can kind of see it there, all you have to do is use a little of your um, alcohol, your vodka, your um, Everclear, whatever you use to make your edible paint uh, with your luster dust. Just get a little bit of that on a paper towel and you can kind of just wipe it off. You could even kind of brush it off maybe, but, um, it will come off. And then I'm just doing, using the same paint, airbrush, to make my Pac-Man gold. He's almost yellow. <laughs> I have a gold Pac-Man this time. And we're gonna set that aside to let that dry, which happens fairly quickly. And then I re-taped off the stencil because I wanted it to come to a peak there. So I just kind of matched it up the best I could. And this time I used a towel to block off the rest of the fondant because I, the weight of that uh, towel will help the overspray and it did help the overspray a lot. Now we're going to need to let that dry. So that definitely needs to be put to the side. I would leave that for probably half an hour until you can touch it and the gold doesn't transfer too much onto your finger. A little bit might be, might happen because as it dries you're left with the gold and sometimes it can be a little powdery but as long as it's not wet then you're okay. Now to attach the fondant to our cake, this cake has already been crumb coated and final coated actually with dark chocolate ganache and set in the refrigerator to firm up. And now that it's firm, I am just attaching the fondant to the top, put a little shortening on the board there, and I put a little, I'm sorry, shortening on the, on the uh, ganache and cornstarch on the board. Flip it upside down, cut off your excess piece, and then flip it upside down or right side up after you get that. And I just put a little piece of tape underneath my board to hold it in place. And then, yes, I use my hands, the clean, dry hands, and this was not for an order. You can use a brush if you're worried about it to um, put on some more shortening on the ganache. Then, now this is set up nice and, eh, I don't wanna call it firm, but it's not overly flexible and I can just wrap it around the cake. Use a ruler or a straight edge of some kind and a sharp blade of another kind. <laughs> wrap them on top of each other, the two ends, cut straight through all of them, and then take your extra pieces off and merge those two pieces together with your fondant smoother. And now that um, where the two pieces meet are in the back since I lined it up askew when I did my stencil and put it in the fridge to firm up before I cut that extra piece off the top. And now our chocolate is ready. So I just gently pull that foil away. And what I'm doing here is I am heating up my cutters with my blowtorch. Guys, don't do what I do, do what I say. Wear heat resistant gloves, this is not smart, don't do it. I'm just 
um, stubborn and impatient. <laughs> and yes, it gets warm, but I have crossed my fingers. Haven't burnt myself with this yet, but it does get warm. <laughs> you could even place it on a saucepan that's on a burner to heat up the metal that way, but still the cutter's gonna be warm because it's metal. <laughs> so just wear your heat resistant gloves. And then um, just press them, gently twist them onto your chocolate so that you don't break it. Just let the heat melt it. And then I have these leaves. Um, these are some more skeleton leaves. Guys, I got these and I got a lot. So you're probably gonna see these in repeat. <laughs> but I wanted them to be gold too. So I thought I'm gonna try airbrushing them with the same gold that I've used on everything else. And it worked great. And these dried within minutes. And of course, we gotta add some gold to our chocolate. So I'm just touching the high points of this texture with a little bit of the gold paint. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do all the gold that I do, guys. I'm a gold addict, metallic addict. You don't have to do that, but I, I kind of do. <laughs> and now we're just gonna use a straight blade to cut off the extra fondant off of the top and blend it in with your smoother. And I just put a skewer, the same skewer that I used in the foam board when I airbrushed that, I just poked that in the cake and then with a little buttercream, stuck our decoration on there. And then I'm just adding all my other de decorations. I'm adding the chocolate with just some buttercream, colored the same color as the chocolate so you don't see it. And then popping in our, our skeleton leaves and these are non-edible spheres that we had at the bakery. And I just went ahead and used those. You can make those out of chocolate. I've done that many times. I'll try to remember to add a link as to how I make those. And then just steamed it to make it all shiny. And there it is, guys. All done. I hope you liked it. And I hope you learned something. And we'll catch you on the next one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.